Hi, this is Working Drawings Lesson 4, Continued. Um, the next term is boss. A boss is a short raised protru protrusion above the surface of a part. Um, typically, it's used to provide a strong and flat bearing surface for some kind of mounting fastener. And that's what you're seeing in this picture here. You're seeing like this slot coming in and then this raised surface over here. And that's going to give me a nice place to um, bolt this part down. Next term is a lug. A lug is a flat or rounded tab protruding from a surface. It's usually used to provide a method for attachment. In this case, the lug doesn't have a hole in it, um, so you can use it as a clamping surface, like a C-clamp or something like that. Um, a flange. A flange is a flattened collar or rim around a cylindrical part. It's used to provide a method of attachment or for a thrust or bearing surface, like, like what's shown here. Um, a neck. Neck. A neck is a small groove cut around the diameter of a cylindrical part. Usually happens where it changes in diameter. Sometimes it's called an undercut. Uh, it's used to prevent interference of a transition radius. And it's used by manufacturing to provide better quality. Um, shaft size and surface finish. I'll, I'll show you a picture of the neck here. Um, okay, so in this case we have a neck and, and what we have with this neck, we're actually relieving this down here such that if I put a mate, mating part over top of it, it wouldn't interfere with that transition radius. And see, it also allows me to grind this surface nice and flush without having to worry about what's in this area. So it helps manufacturing. This is a neck and it's sometimes called an undercut. Now this feature right here is, is very common too. Um, it's more called a thread relief, but it's similar to a neck in that it does the same thing. When you put this thread relief in here, you can run the die over these threads all the way down and create threads all the way down to this thread relief. Um, if you tried to cut threads all the way down to this flange here, um, that would cause some problems. You'd have some incomplete threads and some other problems. So really what happens is the thread relief and the neck, those are used by manufacturing really just to help, um, um, you know, get the, get the thread straight and get your better dimensions. Um, and this is how we dimension them. So the neck is dimensioned by a width, by the depth. Okay. When I say depth, that's depth from the parent surface diameter here. Now, keyway and key seat. There is a difference between keyway and key seat. That's why I put this on here. Keyway is cut into like the hub, um, whereas the key seat is cut into an axle. And what the key is used um, for is to transmit power via a shear load. So typically you would have a, the shaft over here would be driven by an electric motor or a, or a, or a gas engine or something like that. Um, and it turns this shaft and then with the key and the keyway and the key seat made it together what happens there is that this shaft will drive the hub um, by exerting a shearing load on the key um, so another type of key is called a woodruff key that has a round bottom and it's done with a special type of key seat cutter um, and this is like a straight key that's a woodruff key so how to dimension keyways and key seats. So typically how we dimension them is we would dimension across this side, the overall, this, this would be the um, key seat. Um, so the key seat here, we have a dimension for the width of the key seat, pretty tight tolerance. And then we have another dimension here that that really what it does, it establishes, you know, without using GD and T, it, it establishes that that keyway is on center. So essentially this dimension here is half of that dimension. So what it's trying to do is establish the location requirements of that key within the center of the shaft. And then the other dimension we need on here is a dimension from the back side to the depth of the key, key seat. That's how we dimension keys. Um, if you're talking about a key way in the other way we dimension the width of the key way we put this dimension in there to locate um, 
the keyway on center, and then we put a dimension here to the back side of of the um, the hole. So that's how to dimension a keyway in a key seat. A neural, a neural is a pattern cut into the surface of a cylindrical knob or handle. It's typically used to provide better grip of the tool. Um, here you have a diamond neural and how it's written, and then here you have a straight neural, and really it's just dimensioned by the pitch. Um, so a neural is a roughened, roughened surface used to buy a provide a better hand grip or to be used for a press fit between two parts the hand for hand grip purposes is necessarily only to give the pitch of the normal the type of knurling and the length of the neural area okay so here's the length of the neural area here's the pitch of the neural and then raised diamond neural is the type okay here's the length of the neural here's the pitch of the neural and here's the type of the neural okay Next one is a bushing. A bushing is a hollow cylinder. It's used to protect, use that protective sleeve or to guide a cutting tool or as a bearing to reduce friction between moving parts. Bushings are in, usually installed with an interference fit for a semi-permanent installation. What we're looking at here is a picture of a um, installed a cross section of an installed bushing. We have a plate here. We have a liner bushing that's pressed into the plate and it has an interference fit. So this would be our bushing. But then this one also has what we call a slip renewable drill bushing that fits inside the liner too. Okay. So these are examples of bushings. Um, I'm going to stop right there. That concludes our talk about mechanical features and how to dimension the mechanical features. Thank you.